turn right and left. You can see them to the right. To any authorities concerned, this is to inform you of illegal discharging of oily water from bilge tank, which happened last December 14th and 17th, 2009. The chief engineer instructed as to make a bypass flange to discharge oily water overboard. We are asking help to any authorities concerned about this because we must protect our environment and our marine lives. Sincerely yours, the engine department. This is an image that comes from a satellite. It shows a ship and it shows the path of oil behind that ship. Aerial surveillance shows an oil slick in the wake of a ship. This is side-looking airborne radar. Here's the ship, there's the oil. And lastly, that's oil streaking on the side of the ship, called a comet streak. This is evidence of a crime. The ship is underway, so only some of it sticks to the side of the ship. The rest of that oil is in the ocean. It's with the fish, it's with the seabirds, it's with the turtles, with the dolphins, the whales. Because water covers so much of the Earth, people have always thought of it as endless. But in fact, anything that gets into the ocean remains there. The Coast Guard estimates crude oil at the rate of 8,000 barrels a day could be spilling into the open sea. Now authorities are worried about an environmental catastrophe. BP Oil, which leases the platform, and the Coast Guard have at least 35 containment vessels dispatched to the More area. than 11 million gallons of crude oil poured into the sea. The tanker Exxon Valdez bound for California. Most people, when they think about the environment, they worry about the big accidents and forget that anywhere from a third to half of the oil that's in the ocean didn't come from these accidents. It came from the intentional release of oil by ships. Oil is toxic to organisms, and it can be toxic in several ways. This is a gross image. You know, when you coat something with oil like that, it's going to die. That's not what we're concerned with. We are concerned with what happens with those lesser concentrations that you can't see may have very big effects on developing organisms. That's the concern that we are faced with. This is a picture of pink salmon embryos that was exposed to a high concentration of oil and you can see the expansion of this area around the yolk sac. The toxins in oil, as you see here, can cause many of the same kinds of defects in uh, organism as are caused by oftentimes considered to be more serious uh, chemicals like those in PCBs and like dioxins. I think that as a society, we first became aware of oil pollution when there was a very large oil spill called the Torrey Canyon. And the Torrey Canyon was the biggest oil spill that we'd ever had. A tragedy such as Britain has never experienced before. Every tide left a thick covering of oil to which detergent was applied with all speed. With 50,000 tons of oil still on board, defiantly menacing the whole south coast of England, possibly even the coast of France. But now the decision was taken. The Torrey Canyon was to be bombed. For the pilots, it would be not target practice, but bombing for defense to save part of the country from a new menace. Essentially, we woke up to the fact that oil had a cost as well as a benefit. We suddenly realized this is an international problem. It's a problem that we can't deal with by just dealing with one country. It has to be an international treaty, and MARPOL was the response to that.
MARPOL is an international treaty whose purpose was the complete elimination of intentional pollution of the marine environment by oil and other harmful substances. This is a treaty that is successful in terms of the number of countries that have signed on, but in terms of enforcement and the level of violation, much less successful. Deliberate pollution from ships occurs every day. It's a virtual epidemic. International shipping is what makes modern commerce work in the world. So most of the corporate players, the individuals that are involved in international shipping fly, frankly, under the radar. The United States is clearly a world leader in enforcing MARPOL. You would think is the no-brainer is don't dump oil into the water. Unfortunately, uh, there are people out there that still illegally dump oil overboard. It's my job to stop it. I've been with the Coast Guard 17 and a half years now. We go out and do inspections every day. Good morning, Captain. Captain. Jim Connolly, United yeah. States Coast Guard. Yeah. Good morning, Captain. What we like to do from here, Captain, is uh, we'll do a, an examination down in the uh, engine oh, spaces. Okay. We'll actually go down and do a visual inspection of the equipment, and then we'll have them do an operational test. And that tells us whether or not they understand their equipment, if they know how to use it, and if it's operating correctly. The inspectors are kind of like the workhorse. We understand the equipment, we understand the process, we understand the laws. We're making sure that they're in compliance with MARPOL. Large commercial vessels have waste oil. It's part of how they work. You can't just take that and dump it over the side. That has to be put into a holding tank that will later be sent shoreside to a facility. Any overboard discharge has to be through a pollution prevention machine called an oily water separator. Once you get it up to speed, yeah. if you could just give me a minute to take a look around it before we put it in research. Well, Marpole says if you're gonna dump oil, it has to run through filtering equipment, which won't allow more than 15 parts per million oil over the side of the ship. Oil becomes visible around 100 parts per million. If you can see oil in the water, if you can see an oil slick, you know that it's a violation of MARPOL. They were having a hard time getting that oily water separator going. It wasn't operating the way it should. Here we go. OK. Resurgent off the tip, clear water, it's coming down. Other than finding that their equipment was having a hard time getting started operating correctly, we went to check the alarms and sound system. So when that does fail, or when it does go above 15 parts per million and it shuts down, it gives the operating station an uh, alarm. And uh, the alarm wasn't working properly. Just too many red flags. So from there, we're going to start getting a little bit more involved with the process, and we're going to lead it to the district attorney so that this way we can uh, make sure there's no criminal activity going on. 